Thank you for joining us. We'll be talking about spinal epidural abscesses and their management. I'm Dr. Ian Cote, Assistant Professor of Neurological Surgery here at the University of Miami in Jackson Health System. I'm Dr. Thedo too. I'm the uh, Neurosurgery Trauma Fellow here at uh, Jackson Health System. Uh, this patient is a 45-year-old female who presents to the emergency room, uh, who is obtunded, has a fever, uh, has malaise, complaining of thoracic pain. Uh, the patient has a past medical history of diabetes, IV drug use, hepatitis C. And on exam, the patient has a temperature of 39.2, exquisite tenderness to palpation of the thoracic spine, has proximal bilateral extremity weakness, and also two fresh surgical wounds in the thoracic spine. This is an MRI of the thoracic spine, uh, multiple sequences. First, a T1 without contrast, a T2 without contrast, a T1 weighted with contrast. Uh, we'll take a look at the T1 with contrast, but as you can see in the T1 without contrast, the lesion does appear to be uh, hyper-intense, uh, possibly due to blood products uh, within the lesion. Uh, the lesion is hypo-intense on T2 weighted imaging and is contrast enhancing on T1 with contrast. When we zoom in on the T1 weighted imaging with contrast, we can see the epidural collection, which is hyper-intense and contrast enhancing. You can see it highlighted in yellow. You also notice that there are two defects which are highlighted with the blue markers, uh, which appear to be surgical uh, sites from uh, prior intervention. Uh, further history is now available. The patient's husband has arrived and is stating that the patient was at an outside hospital approximately 24 hours ago. She was discharged home after undergoing a surgical procedure to remove fluid from her back, but has since then uh, experienced additional muscle weakness uh, which has progressed over time, which is why she's presented now to the emergency room. This is the axial view of the same sequence. Uh, you can see the epidural collection which is dorsal to the spinal cord. It's highlighted in yellow and you can see that it's causing significant mass effect on the spinal cord which is highlighted in red. So as we synthesize all this information we have a 45 year old female who's presenting with thoracic back pain, malaise, uh, and fever now with a temperature of 39.2 and a compressive mass lesion in her spine which is causing uh, significant muscle weakness in the lower extremities. This is progressive and requires immediate intervention. This is most likely an epidural abscess and will need to go to the operating room. With regards to this patient, management should be expedited promptly. She has new neurological deficits which are progressive and evidence of a mass lesion on the MRI. Blood cultures should be immediately taken and patients should be planned for surgical intervention. In this case, the mass lesion is dorsal and there is minimal bony involvement. Therefore, plan will be a laminectomy for decompression and evacuation of her lesion. This is the post-operative MRI T1 with contrast, which shows evidence of a T4 to T8 laminectomy. As you can see on both the sagittal and the axial views, the dorsal epidural mass has been evacuated and the compression on the spinal cord has been relieved. Learning points for this case include risk factors for spinal epidural abscesses, which include diabetes, obesity, IV drug use, immunocompromised state, and recent surgical procedures. This patient has four of the five risk factors stated. Management in this case includes broad spectrum IV antibiotics, blood cultures, and emergent decompression for progressive neurological compromise. Biopsy was taken intraoperatively and will further dictate antibiotic regimen. Additional learning points for cases of infections to the spinal column. Conservative management should be initial treatment in patients without neurological injury. This includes blood cultures, biopsy, followed by empiric antibiotic therapy. Biopsy may be negative, however, in up to one-third of cases. It's important to note that medical therapy in the form of antibiotics should only be started once an attempt at identifying the causative agents has been made.
Surgical indications will include failure to identify causative organisms with minimally invasive methods, neurological compromise, spinal instability evidenced by extensive bony destruction, and unremitting pain. Also to note, metallic instrumentation is not contraindicated despite the infective process. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been informative. For further information, please refer to our text on spinal infections.